Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our service. We're so glad that you're here today. And a special shout out to our live stream audience coming in today. We're glad that you're a part too. Um, BG and I were just talking that we were wondering if we should delay our service for a little bit because it appears we're missing about 150 people um, <laughs> from last week. And maybe they'll be coming late. We're not sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, <laughs> you are the hearty ones and we are happy to have you. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all those who participated in New York Cares yesterday. Where, where, where are my New York Cares folks? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks to Jackie Friedman for putting this together, and you guys were at a park up in Harlem, so perfect on Earth Day for you to be in a park, and then about noon it started raining, so it was perfect, and then there was lunch. So thank you for that, you guys, wonderful mission. Adam, do you want to say something about the toiletries, the box, or do you want, you'd rather, since I'm here, do you want, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a chill kind of day. Um, you might have noticed there's a box back in the coffee hour room. Uh, earlier in the fall, we did a coat drive, with, coat drive with Metro Baptist. Now, after the holidays and into spring, what we're doing is a drive for toiletries and personal items. Uh, this is a, a partnership with a group that supports LGBT youth, and so we would like to be able to collect all kind of different personal items. They're listed in your bulletin, so either, you know, you drop by Dwayne Reed and just buy a few little things and drop them in the box, and we'll make sure they get to Metro and they're part of their mission and ministry. Joe, you had a couple of announcements. Good morning, everyone. So um, <laughs> I'm laughing at Adam because he didn't do his. I'm doing mine. Like, I feel like a, a microphone hog. Um, so uh, we have a few things coming up in the next several weeks. Next Sunday, we're going to have our new members meeting on April 30th. So if anyone has been coming regularly and wants to learn more about the church, the deacons will host that meeting. And then from there, we'll see we've had a meeting a month or so ago where we've already voted in some new members, and we're scheduling the right hand of fellowship which is our welcoming ceremony that we have at the beginning of service, and that will be on May 21st. So next week is new members, and then May 21st will be the more formal ceremony. And we also want to encourage everyone, if you have the time, if you'd like to volunteer to usher or to host coffee hour, we have a tremendous number of open spots beginning right after next week. So um, if you'd like to see me to volunteer, that would be fantastic. We can take live streaming requests as well. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and last but not least, I just want to announce a rather bittersweet announcement um, a, and a great thank you to this church. After this Sunday, I will be going on sabbatical. This summer, the church has graciously granted Toby and me a three-month sabbatical. So we are leaving as of uh, next week to go to our little cabin in Wisconsin. After we go to the Alliance of Baptists in Raleigh, we'll be heading up to Wisconsin, and we will be reading, writing, and riding motorcycles and trying to revive and really get our grounding back. You will be in great hands. BJ will be here with you this summer. We have a few guest preachers. Yes. <laughs> you don't need to be humble, really. It's, good. <laughs> it's great. And we, we're excited that he will be here for us. And I will look forward to seeing you guys the first Sunday in August. To be sure, um, I will use the time well and be ready to hit the ground running when we come back. So a great thank you to the leadership of our church and to all of you for granting this wonderful time of respite and, renew uh, and renewal. Thank you. So let us begin our service as we always do by celebrating family and community and passing the peace of Christ.
Our call to worship this morning comes from Paul's second letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Our opening hymn this morning is 215, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. Let us now stand together as we are able and sing hymn number 215.
I have to be serious and pray now. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> if y'all would bow with me. Lord, it is good that we are joyful this day because he is not in the tomb. He is risen. It is easy to remember that when we are surrounded by crowds and celebration as we were on last Sunday. It is important that we continue to remember that. As life moves on, as the year moves on, he is risen. We know, O oh Lord, because he is risen, that death no longer holds sway. As the year moves on, as the crowds sometimes thin, that can be hard to hold on to as well. We see the news. We are reminded, by, we are reminded of the broken places in our life and in our community. But he is risen. If he is amongst the dead, if we are to find the living one amongst the dead, it is only because he in his life seeks out those who live in the dark corners of this world. Out of love, but indeed out of promise and out of power. And so in the sure and the certain knowledge of that power and that promise, and yes, indeed, of that love, we lift up to you now those broken places in our lives and in our city and in our world. And we do so not just on minds and hearts, but also, indeed, on lips. Lord, we give you these prayers that have been lifted up and even those that we may ha not have lifted, knowing that you can do with them more than we could ever hope for or imagine, knowing that you know them, you know the cares and the concerns of our hearts even better than we do, because you know us even better than we know ourselves. We lift up to you the broken places of this world, knowing, O oh Lord, that it is not our world, but that it is your world that it is in your hands, that you love it, and that you care for it, and that you wish nothing more than to redeem it from all of its brokenness and its pain. Finally, O oh Lord, we lift, you, we lift up these things to you in the power of your Spirit and in the resurrection of your Son, and we pray that as we live with these cares and these concerns, you help us remain joyful. You help us remain hopeful. You help us remain confident. Because he is indeed risen. And we close this time of prayer with the words Christ gave us to offer to you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As we continue our worship, let us now sing together our next hymn, number 231, Sing of One Who Walks Beside Us. Let us stand now as we are able and sing hymn number 231. We have three scripture texts this morning. The first one will come from the third letter of John. I'll read verse 11. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but imitate what is good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil is has not seen God. Our second text comes from the second chapter of the letter of James, verses 14 to 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill, and yet you don't supply their bodily needs, What is the good of that? So faith, by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And our third text comes from the letter of Titus, chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, gravity, and sound speech that cannot be censured, then any opponent will be put to shame, having nothing evil to say of us. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of my sermon today is Riding Shotgun Down the Avalanche. This week, I spent some time, among other things, reading a collection of quotes by the philosopher Voltaire. Yes, it's true, I lead a glamorous and exciting life. But I came across this one that just really struck me. 
And here it is. No snowflake in an avalanche ever felt responsible. No snowflake in an avalanche ever felt responsible. And I was so struck by that image. The idea that one tiny little snowflake, when joined together with the force of millions, can transform from something beautiful into some utterly violent force like an avalanche. I named the sermon not only for the quote, but also one of my favorite songs by the songwriter Sean Colvin. And maybe some of you know her. And she has a song called Riding Shotgun Down the Avalanche. And I think that captures the image that I'm talking about today, an image of chaos and confusion, tumbling, falling down an avalanche. No snowflake in an avalanche ever felt responsible. It's true for snowflakes, and it's true for people. I mean, just look at the news. The Paris shootings this week, the bombings in the Coptic church in Egypt, violent actions claimed yet again by terrorist groups, violence that is driven, supported, nurtured by groups, a churning avalanche of hate and judgment. But you don't have to just go to the papers. All you have to do is go online. And in addition to internet bullies, there are now cyber gangs. They hang out in chat rooms and then roam the web and social media dumping judgment and hate down like an avalanche. And they feel no responsibility because they are surrounded by others doing the exact same thing. I raise this because just this week I had an anti-Semitic troll gang come after one of my blogs on Psychology Today. It was the craziest thing. I got notice from the blog folks that there were some posts made. I looked at it. The blog had nothing to do with Judaism, and yet they came in four or five comments from all different folk with the same message that was just hateful, vicious stuff. I mean, random violence, and it's so real. The psychology behind this kind of behavior is clear. Being part of the crowd presents a sense of affirmation. Others are doing it, therefore the behavior is okay. I mean, we all remember our parents going, well, would you jump off a bridge if your friends were doing it? Why don't you like, yes. When we follow a crowd, we lose our independent sense of responsibility. We lose our sense of duty. It's like our independent moral compass gets thrown off. Crowds can take on violent behavior, which may not necessarily represent the individual members of the crowd, but because everybody else is doing it, people go along with it. I mean, it starts when we're young. It's like maybe you're out in the playground and somebody's getting beat up and everybody gathers around to watch, maybe even cheer. We see it in history, the Salem witch trials, the Holocaust, the civil rights battle. We see mob violence at a Macy's one day sale. As a matter of fact, I was part of some mob violence this week. Last Monday, Toby and I went up to Boston to visit our son Chris and we went to a baseball game at Fenway Park. Any of y'all ever been to Fenway? Um, it's this wonderful old park. It's one of the smaller parks and it really brings the crowd all together. Somewhere around the sixth inning, a fight broke out below us. Some guy said something to some other guy and a beer gets thrown and you know, just whole hoo-ha. And then all of a sudden, the police show up. And they grab one of the guys and start to haul him away when all of a sudden the crowd starts booing and a chant starts, let him go, let him go. And it's just a few people and then all of a sudden it's an entire section and then all of a sudden it's the entire quadrant and then all of a sudden I find myself standing with my fist in the air going, let him go. Toby looks at me and goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, I have no idea. It was mob mentality, blindly following others because that's what was happening. 
Now, after things calmed down, I couldn't help but think of a similar incident that happened not at Fenway, but, but in Jerusalem. When a crowd chanted, let him go, for a criminal named Barabbas. Mob violence is real. But there's another kind of mob violence that we don't talk about so much, and that's the mob violence of indifference. I once heard a minister say that there's two kinds of sin, commission and omission, which leads us to another great Voltaire quote. Every man is guilty of all the good he didn't do. Every person is guilty of all the good he or she did not do. History is full of examples of where the world stood by in the face of violence and injustice, stood by because no one else was doing anything, so it was okay. Genocides in Rwanda and Darfur, and the world stood by. Complete devastation of New Orleans, and the world stood by. Civil war in Syria, water poisoning in Flint, Michigan, children dying of malnutrition in sub-Saharan Africa, and the world stands by. Or how about this? You're in a group, maybe at a cocktail party, and someone makes an off-color comment about someone of another race, or someone of another religion, or someone of a different sexual orientation. And you start to call it out, but then you think about it, and you don't. Because you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to offend anybody. And why would you? No snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. There is an avalanche of violence and injustice and indifference in this world, and we are a snowflake in that avalanche. But somewhere in that churning force, we have to regain our sense of duty and responsibility. We have to regain our sense of moral grounding and stand tall. This week, I had the privilege of attending a physician's lecture on the power of posture. Again, a glamorous and exciting life I lived. But this actually was an, an incredible lecture that this guy gave. The point of it was, if you have a weak core, if our internal structure, our posture is off, then it affects all other aspects of the body. And the most interesting part of his comments were about the psychology of all this. From a young age, we are made to understand that to stand at attention means to draw attention. It represents power. I mean, you think about it in the animal kingdom, like if you've got a, a wolf pack, for example. The alpha is the one that stands tall, ears up, tail up, always standing tall, but that invites attention. It invites challenge. As you go down in the hierarchy, you get to the weaker members, and the head's lowered, the tail's lowered, and they just fade into the pack. It's the same with humans. We don't want to draw attention. We just want to fit in. We want to fade into the pack, so we sort of slump down and fade away. How we hold our body has a lot to do with how we see ourselves. And his point was, if we change how we hold our internal structure, if we stand tall, then not only do we heal and empower our body, we change our mindset. And it's the same with changing our moral grounding, too. In both instances, we have to set our internal structure right. I mean, consider the scriptures that B.J. read for us this morning. 3 John 1, 11, Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. In the book of Titus, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. Show integrity, dignity, and sound speech. And that wonderful scripture from the book of James, what good is it if you have faith but no deeds? 
Faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. In order to regain our moral bearing, we have to set our internal structure right. We have to set our spiritual structure right. We must imitate good. We must have dignity and sound speech. We must take action. And when we do that, we not only empower our spirit, but we change how we come at the world. It's like a wonderful song that Richard Bender, our tenor, is going to sing for us in a minute. Angel in Manhattan. It's this wonderful song by Ellis Paul about an angel who comes down to earth, lands here in New York City on Bleecker Street, and finds herself fighting against the avalanche of the skeptical, messed up craziness of this world. Well, brothers and sisters, that has to be us. Because sometimes we have to step up and be the angel. We have to find our moral grounding and stand tall in the face of an avalanche of injustice and indifference. And what if we did? What would that look like? Well, I think we have a great literal image of it right here in New York City. It's right down there on Wall Street, and it's the statue of the fearless girl. Some of you may have seen this statue. I'm sure most of you have read about it. A little background. This statue, along with another one, is down near Bowling Green. About 30 years ago, during the stock market crash of 1987, an Italian sculptor created a 7,000-pound bronze bull to be displayed near Wall Street. And it was designed as a gift to heal our country from the crash and to capture the resilience of the American people. Last month, on International Women's Day, a new statue appeared right in front of the bull. And it's this small, little four-foot, bronze little girl who wears pigtails and her dress is flying out, blowing out behind her, and her hands are on her hips, and she's staring up at the bull and just staring him down. It's all over the news now because the bull sculptor's mad because thinks fearless girl has ruined his artistic integrity, blah, blah, blah. If I was given a sermon on art interpretation, we'd talk about that. <laughs> but I'm not, so we're not. <laughs> I just want to celebrate her image. I mean, looking at her, I think about all the fearless young girls and young women in our world. I mean, I think about, I think about Joan Richards' little girl who's just so fearless and a, I think about Hannah Ruth, BJ's little girl, who's so fearless. I think about, in my own family, you know, my nieces, Rachel and Laurel. I think about my stepdaughter, Nancy Solberg. I think about Gilly Thompson, my daughter-in-law, all fearless women. I think about the fearless women in this congregation who have stood up against an avalanche of injustice. But for our purposes, I not only want to celebrate the image of that beautiful, fearless girl, I want to link it to our message because for our purposes, that fearless girl statue is bigger than gender. It's about undaunted courage. It's about resolve and tenacity and determination. It's about standing tall and firm in a place where we are facing down the violent forces charging at us like an avalanche. How would your choices, your path, your life changed if you lived like this little statue? How would things change if you lived your life standing tall and strong? Brothers and sisters, we can do this. We have to do this. The world needs us to do this. We have to step up and be the angel. We have to access the power of faith and prayer and work, we have to stand firm in the face of the oncoming avalanche. And we can, because we're not standing alone. We're standing firm in the power of God to do good, to protect the downtrodden, to lift up the lowly. And we can do this. And together, when we do it, our lives and our legacy began to track the powerful words over the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Thou shalt not be a victim. Thou shalt not be a perpetrator. And above all, 
thou shalt not be a bystander. Brothers and sisters, the avalanche is coming. Stand firm. Stand tall. And the people said, As the ushers come down the aisle to pass around the plates, now is the time in our service when we are invited and encouraged to support the missions and ministries here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church. That one has fallen among the mortals on bleaker street. I lent a hand. She stared up at the steeples as if to blame them for the pavement beneath her feet. She said, I never much liked flying. The job requires trying The hard parts avoiding buildings and concrete Spread the news There's an angel in Manhattan Call out the paparazzi and the television crew let the people choose If a little faith wouldn't harm them Print the headlines up in the New York Daily News It was just another day Like any other other day A Tuesday afternoon I hailed a cab And a crowd gathered as it pulled beside us And someone tore at her wings But I helped her safely inside I'm much obliged, she said But the driver, he looked shaken He said, you're faking it, lady Who's taking who? for a ride but then we flew up over the traffic she turned the radio to static and she sang to him in Billie Holiday's sweet voice spread 
the news Cause there's an angel in Manhattan Call out the paparazzi and the television crews Let the people choose If a little faith wouldn't harm you Print the headlines up in the New York Daily News It was just another day What will the mayor say? Good afternoon Good afternoon We floated down the length of Fifth Avenue And she threw out miracles Oh, it was a hysterical ride And while the crowd on the sidewalk Might have looked skeptical Well, then she took the blue Right out of their cynical eyes it's all in what you feel inside She shook the mayor's hand And he declared that he'd hold a press conference And all the fans and protesters blocked the stairs to City Hall I'd like to thank you all, he said and when she stepped up before the cameras Man, it felt like a trial But she smiled as the questions were called and They asked her What do you say to detractors Who claim you're just some actor She said the question here Is do I believe in you Spread the news I saw an angel fly from Manhattan In front of paparazzi In front of television crews And me I choose I know a little faith will not harm me Despite what they print in the New York Daily News It was just another day Like any other other day In the arms of the angel May you find some Comfort here Tell the man Who repairs the wings for angels That one has fallen among The mortals on Bleecker Street Closing hymn this morning is number 227, In the Garden.
Let us remain as we are and sing together hymn number 227. We're so glad that you came to be with us and worship this morning. Please remember that this is a community of faith in which you are always welcome and you will always be considered family. Speaking of family, I will miss you. Toby and I will miss you while we are gone, but we will keep you in our hearts and prayers and we will look forward to our reunion in August. Until we see you again, may God bless you and keep you. And as we go through those doors and face down the avalanche in front of us, may we stand tall. May we stand firm, and may we stand fearless. Amen. <laughs>